All right, go to the first book of the Bible. The 35th chapter, verse 16. That's where we're going to pick up tonight. Last, last week, we looked at, uh, we kind of referred to it as a reset. Jacob needed a reset, and God was offering it. And he sent Jacob and, and his crew to, to Bethel. And some really good things happened when they got to Bethel. Uh, Jacob was reminded his name is now Israel. He was uh, reminded of the promise. And the promise still holds. And the promise is going to be there for him. And it was a real time of worship and response for Jacob. Setting up a stone pillar. And he called the place not just Bethel, but El Bethel, which means God of Bethel. So this is a place that's going to be always special to him. Genesis 35. Thank you. Yeah, Genesis, I'm, I'm seeing some folks. But yes. We're making fast progress here. Genesis 35. <coughs> so, so things are kind of refocused. Right now, they're they're recentered. Yeah, Genesis 35. We're going to go to verse 16. This is so much like life. When you think, you know, you're coming out of a horrible time, things get recentered, refocused, and then we pick up at verse 16. Then they moved on from Bethel. Tell you what, it makes you want to stay in Bethel when you, <laughs> as you go along. While they were still some distance from, from Ephrath, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. As she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, Don't be afraid, for you have another son. And as she breathed her last, for she was dying, she named her son Ben-Onai, but his father named him Benjamin. <coughs> Ben-Onai means son of my trouble. Benjamin means son of my right hand. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Over her tomb, Jacob set up a pillar, and to this day, that pillar marks Rachel's tomb. Verse 21, Israel moved on again and pitched his tent beyond Migdal at Eder, Eder. While Israel was living in that region, Reuben went in and slept with his father's concubine, Bilhah, and Israel heard of it. Now, if you want to kind of keep that in perspective and connection, Rachel dies, and Bilhah is, is, is Rachel, the, the concubine uh, that, that was connected with Rachel. Okay? Jacob had 12 sons, the sons of Leah, Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, the sons of Rachel's maidservant, Bilhah, Dan and Naphtali. By the way, looking up, you know, you can go, how do you pronounce N-A-P-H-A-T-L-I? Mm -hmm. And right there it is. It's Naphtali. 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 You just, just make it sound like you know what you're talking about, right? I actually had a little girl in school whose name was Naphtali. And she pronounced it Naphtali? She did. Yeah. And I Yeah. Don't hear that very often. There you go. And, and this, is, this is one of the sons, right? The sons of Leah's maid servant, Zilpah, Gad, and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. Jacob came home to his father, Isaac, and Mamre, near Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had stayed. Isaac lived 180 years. Then he breathed his last and died. 
and was gathered to his people, old and full of years. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Okay. So we have the tragic story of Rachel giving birth to her second child and dying in childbirth. And of course, the child Benjamin is, is going to be precious to Jacob uh, from, from, from that time on. Um, and she was buried not too far from, from what we know of today as Bethlehem. Um, you know, I, I look at, at this and I, and I also go back and incorporate verse 8 that we looked at last week. And one of the things that strikes me is, you know, here's this reset button. Here we are in Bethel and, and things are getting refocused again. And Jacob suffers four heartbreaks uh, when you stop and take a look at it. The first was the death of Deborah, Rebecca's nurse. We read about that last week in, in verse 8. And, and apparently there had to be some closeness there. There was, there was a, a, a connection that that was mentioned. And, and Rebecca's death is never really mentioned. Uh, that, that, that we find. Her burial is mentioned, but the thought seems to be that she had been long dead and they were simply bringing the bones uh, to bury along with, uh, with Isaac. But that's much later. Uh, so we've got the death of Deborah, the death of Rachel, and then the tragedy of Reuben going in and sleeping with Bilhah. And, and how that, that, as a matter, well, well, we'll come back to that in a second. And then Isaac's father, I mean, uh, Jacob's father, Isaac, dying. All of that here toward the end of uh, the 35th chapter. You know, I don't know what you found in your study about this passage, but, but Reuben going in and sleeping with his father's concubine seems to be more than anything a power play uh, as the oldest son and wanting to get a jump on, on, on things happening. Uh, in terms of, of his position. Uh, and I don't know if you've seen anything else that, that's come along, but if you want to take a look at how that worked out, keep your finger here and turn to Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Remember, we did this once before looking at what he had to say to Simeon and Levi. But if you go to Genesis 49 and ver look at verses 3 and 4, This is Jacob calling for his sons to gather around him so I can tell you what's going to happen in days to come. And in essence, he's, he's, he's offering a blessing for his sons. Verse 3, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first sign of my strength, excelling in honor, excelling in power. But look at verse 4. Turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel. For you went up into your father's bed onto my couch and defiled it. There are consequences. And it, it seems to, to come through to us often. And, and uh, Jacob holds him accountable. And, and as you look at, um, at all of this, from, from Rachel's giving birth and her death, her tragic death and childbirth, uh, these four tragedies. Is there anything that strikes you or anything you want to comment on or any questions that you have that you want to bring up? Yeah, Larry. I think the last sentence that you read is poignant. Uh, which in 49 or? And his sons Esau and Jacob oh, okay. buried him. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, I mean, at least to me it strikes me as, you know, Bygones are bygones, yep. and they're doing the right thing together. Absolutely. I, I think that is kind of moving. Very intentional to, for it to be mentioned, yeah, that they so. did it together. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great observation. 
Anything else? Kind of challenges us. Doesn't it? Are we willing? Is there is there anything in our lives that, that we need to let bygones be bygones with? There's almost always something, isn't there? Yeah. Any any other thoughts, observations, questions? Okay. This is really, in many ways, uh, an end to a major section of Jacob's life. Uh, chapter 36 goes into kind of a, a tra tracking of Esau his descendants, of course, they would become the nation of Edom, southeast of, of the Dead Sea, and had quite a history, a history that, that uh, was a, certainly established by the time that we get to Moses, which would have been uh, 15th century, uh, about 1440 thereabouts. And remember Moses leading, leading the Hebrew people out of Egypt and, and looking to take them through the land of Edom, and some real conflict came about. And you, you kind of look at the history of Edom and, tr and track it. You might do some research and, and, and check that out. But it goes down to about uh, the sixth century. So, so you're talking about, depending on when you give it, give it a starting point, anywhere from, from seven to, to 900 years that, that Edom was was a nation, um, and there, there's, there, there, I mean, there's even one point when the Nabataeans come in and, and defeat them, and they actually go about 250 miles south and, and become Idumea. I mean, it gets, gets kind of, I find those things rather mind-boggling as you go along, but still, it was, it was for, for, for anywhere from seven to 900 years. Edom was a, was a strong nation and often at odds with Israel. Um, so so you, that's, you know, chapter 36 doesn't get into all of that. It talks about descendants. It talks about who were the, some of the rulers of, of Edom. And all of that coming from Esau. Um, you get to chapter 37. It's fascinating because in verse 2 it says, this is the account of Jacob. But as soon as it says this is the account of Jacob, who's it start talking about? Joseph. Joseph, right? And from Genesis 37, pretty much through the end of the book of Genesis, up through chapter 50, it's the story of Joseph and his brothers and Jacob. I mean, Jacob moves from being, he's still, he's still a main character, but he's sort of not center piece. Joseph is and his relationship with his brothers. Uh, and, and how God uses Joseph, who is the next, the youngest son, uh, now that, that Benjamin is here. I have a question. Sure. Back in chapter 36, where it lists the wives of um, Joseph's brothers, mm -hmm. and it says the daughter of Ishmael is one of his wives. Is that Ishmael? What verse? What verse are you? Verse three. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, Is that our, our <laughs> well, I y'all help me think that through. Sister of. That's a question that I'd have to, talk to to really look at, unless somebody can tell me a good answer to that. Anybody have it? Any of your study notes mention uh, it, it, it? I mean, it's very possible. As if I'm thinking timeline. Daughter of Ishmael is the firstborn son of Abraham, Hagar, although he is not the son of the promise. Right. 
so so they're that they're making the direct connection to uh, to the Ishmael that we're thinking of. Time 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 frame seems like it would work. So good question. And you got all really lucky because a lot of times I'll say, yeah, I think that's a good homework. I know you do. Thank you. They, they bailed you out. Way to go, Eric. I can see Dawn's wheel of return. Well, it seems like it should be over. We're talking Isaac's brother Ishmael, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Daughter of Ishmael. Well, Don, Don is making this to be a homework assignment. <laughs> but it's Don, it's his homework. Because the preacher doesn't have an answer. Yeah, no. But it's 100, <laughs> he's 180 years old now. So mm -hmm. Ishmael would be 180. So this, his daughter would be. Well, he's a hundred. He's 180 years old when he dies. Yeah. Okay. Well, says, go go way back. It also says. Since Esau is Isaac's son, his marriage to Ishmael's daughter aligns him with his father's rival. So it takes her back to mm -hmm. she's married They're making a they're, they're yeah. making a strong connection it's to pretty, pretty large age the Ishmael. Yeah. Okay. Big. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've I confess when it comes to genealogies. I tend to. <laughs> now I know preachers aren't supposed to say that. Join the crowd. I get over. Just kind of in the thirty-seven. Over. <laughs> but when you have a question like that, pursue it and let us know what you find out. Eric, Eric, in his study Bible, his notes are making a very direct connection. So see if see if you go anywhere else and they say no 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 you can't make that connection. So see what you find out and let remind me next week and let us know what you find out. Okay. All right. So I, what I'd like us to do is I'd like to continue on because Jacob's life obviously is continuing on. And I'd like us to pick up, and we're going to be following a lot of, of Joseph's life, but um, Jacob has a, has a role in this. It's almost like it, it's retirement. And Jacob is, is turned everything over to the sons, and the sons are, are going to be carrying on the major work. But Jacob has, he, he is a, a patriarch, and he has very strong influence on uh, on what takes place especially when things get tough and things get hard and uh, so let, let's let's do that let's go ahead and look at the first four verses of Genesis 37 Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed the land of Canaan this is the account of Jacob Joseph a young man of 17 was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had born to, been born to him in old age, in his old age, and he, and he made a richly ornament, ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him, speaking of Joseph. So let's just kind of hold it right here. Haven't we seen this before somewhere? Right off the bat. And you get to, to think about the births of the twins, Jacob and Esau. You think about Isaac and Rebekah, and Rebekah loved Jacob, and 
uh, Isaac loved, loved Esau and the problems that created. And, and here we are, right off the bat, and we're reading about uh, Israel, Jacob's love for Joseph. He did it. I mean, when you think about why, Rachel was his favorite. It was his. It was the one he selected. It was. It was the wife that he worked seven years for. His heart was was tied to, to, to Rachel, and he loved her deeply. And, and Joseph was the child that they had together. And then she died in childbirth to Benjamin, and Benjamin's going to have a, a a precious place. But what does that say to the other ten? How does that impact them? Well, Scripture is telling us right here, they hated Joseph. They couldn't stand him. Mm -hmm. I am, my, I have only one sister. And my sister said all along, you know, mother's closer to you. And that bothered me so, I'm the firstborn. I thought that my whole life until I finally, I was telling her all the reasons that wasn't true. And then I realized this is, I have two sons, again, same-sex children. That you can be, you can be closer to one because of personality, mm -hmm. etc., but love them the same. And I think that's, I, I think you're right. Uh, that's just the thing that we humans, we, maybe it's just my family. <laughs> We're not going to say it. No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I obviously, put well. me on the prayer list, but, <laughs> but I, I think that it's possible. I, I, it finally came to me that that's possible, you know, mm -hmm. that you can love both your children but be tuned in more to one than the other because your personalities are either more alike or, or something. I don't know. Please, somebody else tell me they know that is true or is it just my truth? Well, I have three sons that each one are different, and the love I have for each one of them is different. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's different. Mm -hmm. But I have not that you want me more than the other. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm the kind of person that counted jelly beans to make sure they got the exact same amount in their Easter baskets. I mean, oh, I never did things like that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so sick of it. Any other thought? <laughs> Circumstance also. Jim and I used to say, it's not bad being an only child. I'm, I'm sorry, what did you say? I said circumstance obviously plays a big part. In this? In, well, that's just one example. His mother died right. whenever he was being born. Right. And the father has such a, I mean, that's a when, when Benjamin was born, yes, Rachel died. Yeah. Yeah. But there must be something that he didn't do with the other ten. I mean. Well, I mean, let's, let's, let's be real. There's so many dynamics here. I mean, you've got four different women who are the mothers of the children. Well, and you've got. All the, all the, I mean, there's not that rootedness and connectedness that Jacob would have with each of those four women. He didn't want anything to do with Leah, right. apparently, and, and, and yet kept, kept having babies, but that was about the only thing we're told. Uh, and then you've got the two, whether you, whether you use the word concubine or uh, maidservants, you're, you're still talking about. So, so there's a lot of dynamics here, and the love of his life is gone, and Joseph is, is one of the children of the love of his life. So you, you see where it can happen, but you also readily see that it creates major issues. And in any family where, where, where children, a child is going to feel <coughs> less love than another child, that's going to be, that's going to be a problem, you know? That that's going to have to be dealt with and addressed. Well, didn't you think the ten had that feeling before that, though? I mean, none of them probably were. were oh yeah, this is this is a culminating effect. Yeah. yeah. So none of them were these favorites. So what? Uh, so why would they? Why would they feel differently? I mean, I, I, guess, I, I don't know what. I guess I'm on the door. Rock, I think what we're getting here is is a commentary. Of this is the situation. They hated Joseph. And I don't think it's a new thing. I think it's something that, I mean, Joseph's only 17 at this point. So he's, he's young. Tale. Well, there is that. Well, yeah. Isn't it interesting <laughs> that, you, that, that that came up in verse 2? He brought their father a bad report about them. Now, my question is, did, did Jacob send Joseph out 
to basically find out what's going on, or was Joseph doing this of his own free will and desire? Am I seeing a... That's a timid hand on the back row. But I was, I, I was just thinking, though, what this, the stage that this set for Joseph later on in mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's a question we need to ponder all the way through this. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, and it's a reminder, I think, for our lives. We need to see if God had a plan for that, even if you're in the midst of something that's very difficult. Being sold into slavery is not a good thing, yeah. but it turned out to be such. Well, and, and, and these first four verses are setting the stage for all of that. It's just letting us know it wasn't a good situation in terms of the relationship between Joseph and his brothers, in terms of probably how they felt about their dad, who, who had clearly two favorites, uh, Joseph and Benjamin. So... Y'all, y'all want to get to chapter 50, don't you? You want, you want to go from chapter 37 to chapter 50 right now. Yeah. Now, here's, here's what I want you to do. I want you to read this like you've never read it before. I, I want you to read it with fresh eyes. And, and try to stick yourself in there somewhere. And, and see what you come up with. Um, One way to help with that is if you got access to a few different translations. Yeah. Maybe maybe read it in a different translation. That's a good idea. Then you then you've read it in. Sure. And read it. I, matter of fact, let me encourage you to do this. Read it straight through and without looking at study notes, without looking at a commentary. Just just read it through, and let it just kind of soak in what you're experiencing as you're reading it and and see what uh, see what you come up with because I mean right after this we've got the two dreams and and uh, so you're and then chapter 37? yes chapter 37 and I'm going to give a heads up we're we're going to we're not going to we're going to move <coughs> through this a little faster than what we've been doing uh, so Judah and Tamar is another six story. We're going to 39. <laughs> and we're going to go to 40. We're going to stick with Joseph and, and the, the brothers. And let's see where this where this goes and, and what, what we learn. Okay? I, I, we're going to need to hold it right about this point. I, I hesitate to get into the dreams because we just get them read. So be reading the dreams. Um, We're reading 37, 30, well, well 37, 39, 40. Just, we're, we're sticking with Joseph and his brothers and the coming problems that they're going to be facing. You can not read it, but we're not going to get into it here. What's on the final? That's what we really want to know. <laughs> there might be a final. 